Hello, this is Tony Henderson Mayers and welcome to my channel. Uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and ring that bell so you will know every time I upload a new video. So every um, Sunday is my faith videos. Wednesday, kind of romance and um, some acting maybe. Um, Friday is usually business or acting or creative streams of income, different things like that. Um, and maybe I'm interviewing someone. But on Monday, that's when I upload uh, new content, um, especially in the area of romance. So this video that you're about to see is a wise courtship joint. Check it out. sometimes people take romance for granted. Um, it's so built up in our media, you know, in movies and Disney and all of that, you know, uh, the whole um, funny feeling you get when you fall in love, you know, and, and girls dream about it and they prepare for romance um, from the time that they're born almost, you know, having babies and being in relationships. Uh, but it's, it's always the... Um, the glamour of it all, you know, the getting the white dress and preparing for a wedding and, and then um, and then just skips right to the baby, you know. But uh, very often we don't plan in the way that we really should for a relationship. And I'm a firm believer that romance can either be a reward or it can, or it can be your ruin, all right? And uh, a lot of people can attest to the ruin. Doesn't mean that your life is totally ruined and wrecked and you can't come back from it, but it does mean that it can put a big stain or set you back some in so many categories of your life. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So like I said, we may not get through all of it. We may, it just depends on how things kind of flow. So I wanna go over just a couple of statistics with you. Um, I don't want to bore you on all that stuff, but I just a couple of them that stood out to me as wow, and I want to share them with you. First of all, 60% of people stay in bad relationships. That's amazing. 60%, let that sink in for a moment, okay? That people will stay in bad relationships. But the next thing I'm going to put up here is that many don't know what a healthy relationship is. Like they don't have a clue. So it's easier for them to stay in these bad relationships because a lot of people don't know. Now, of course, if they're extreme, uh, people may realize, but sometimes uh, what may seem extreme to us may not seem extreme to them. And so um, it is, it's just unbelievable. I see Johnny is, is getting ready to join us. So I'm gonna just hesitate here a little bit. Okay, Johnny, welcome. Um, just go ahead and keep yourself on mute for a moment. We just started the presentation. We just started. So you are right on time. Um, so the first statistic is 60% of people stay in bad relationships, but also many people don't know um, what a healthy relationship is. That is very jarring, okay? Um, and so this is something that we pass down, I believe, you know, um, People have known what good, great relationships were, but over the years, as things become accept, uh, acceptable, okay, because people have had bad relationships even back in the day, all right? So we're not trying to glorify back in the day, but, um, but they knew that they weren't good, okay? And sometimes they couldn't get out of them. You know, women couldn't get out of them and all those types of things. Um, but they knew what a toxic relationship was. They knew when something was bad. Um, and then when we were able to have choices or make choices, some people tended to make bad choices, maybe because they were young or maybe because they, you know, felt like they didn't have choices and sometimes because they were reckless. And so we, we're really trying to um, own this and take, take back those reins because a bad relationship can really be, as Johnny, as uh, we said, the topic is romance, reward, or ruin. Another statistics I want to share with you, just one more, is average relationships last two years and nine months. Those are the length, length time of relationships. 
So, you know, what people not really staying in relationships long, and of course, these could be unmarried relationships, but these also could be the married relationships, because you know, uh, a lot of marriages, I mean, some people, they go in knowing it's not going to work. And it's a miracle that they even last a year, you know, for whatever reason, you know, people just, I think that to have the wedding day is a strong, strong pull for a lot of people especially women. Um, I don't know why we don't feel like we can just throw ourselves a big party <laughs> and wear a beautiful dress because you can do that too. You don't have to get married, all right? You want to get married when it's right. Okay, we need to be good stewards over our relationships. Um, we need to be good stewards in everything, even our relationships. Whether you're married, unmarried, separated, divorced, or widowed, we all have a responsibility to have great relationships. Welcome, darling. And so uh, you're just in time. We're going to just do this little presentation, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A, okay? So welcome. Uh, so whether you're married, unmarried, separated, divorced, or widowed, we all have a responsibility to be good stewards in our relationships. We're taught in church to be good Good, good stewards over our money. We're taught in careers to be good stewards over our careers and, um, you know, uh, how you go up the corporate ladder. But very seldom do people teach you to be good stewards in your relationships. And we really need to be. Um, Romans 14 and 12 says, so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Now, this was this presentation I'm doing with you guys. I just spoke recently at a conference. So you will see so, uh, quite a few uh, scripture references. But the reason why I have put those references in, especially to the, the group that I was speaking to, is because um, it was a, mostly a women's conference and a lot of times, uh, and religious, and a lot of times, sometimes as religious women, we can really carry that banner of scripture and God. I mean, we just carry that thing right on down, honey. And some of us even go to the extremes where, you know, we got everything, and I'm not saying you're supposed to let everything out, but we got everything covered up on our bodies. We carry a big old cross, a big old Bible. You can't say hello without you saying praise God, amen. And, you know, going through all of these changes. But then when it comes to our romances, we do something totally different. Okay, so we have to kind of be good stewards over all of this. Again, the topic today is romance, um, reward or ruin. Okay, and I may not get through all of it because I love Q&A and I don't want to, um, you know, talk too much about it because we can always come back to the, you know, make it a part two. Um, Matthew 6, 1 says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward from your father in heaven. Now, I know that a lot of these scriptures that I'm showing you are, have been taught in other um, contexts, but also it still goes even with romance. It's, it's just basically saying, don't live one way and then in front of other people and then live another behind, you know, back. And we're not talking about just being hypocritical. You know, somebody, you, you know, you a hypocrite. You just a hypocrite, you know, we just, we ride that. I'm not even talking about it even on that level. I'm talking about it for your own satisfaction in life to live that abundant life. Try to um, not have a facade for people. And then when you get behind closed doors, you're not satisfied. You're not happy. You know what I'm saying? You pleasing everybody else, but you're not pleasing yourself and if you're not pleasing yourself nine times out of ten you're not really in connection with God because God is going to bless you in a way that you're going to be satisfied it's not going to always be perfect because we are humans but you will have a satisfaction okay so it's far more important to make sure you connect it with God and you're really um listening to him because he's going to look out for you okay and some and many of us can say we got great mothers and our mothers would want to do the best for us, but they don't know everything, okay? They can't see everything. They can be great guides if you have a good mother, okay? If you don't have a great mother, no telling what she'll do. But God is never going to fail you because he knows the beginning from the end. All right, so um, 1 Timothy 6.20 says, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge. You got to get up under wise teaching, and you've got to, you got to guard everything that God gives you, not just your money, 
not just your children, but your heart, okay? Everything that he gives you, you got to guard it. Even yourself, like we don't have a problem saying our children are beautiful, they're wonderful, they deserve the best. But what about you? Do you deserve the best? Yes, you do, because you are God's child, okay? So it's important. Um, and I added this basically for the women I spoke to. I said, are you heavenly minded and no earthly good? Because we were talking to a lot of spiritual leaders and sometimes as spiritual leaders or women of God, sometimes we can, you know, keep that facade going where we're so up here, you know, we're in the clouds. We were God all the time, honey. We just, we just living with God. And then when we got to be among regular people, we can't seem to operate. Okay. But all that this God is telling us and teaching us up here, we ought to be able to use it down here. Okay. All right. Ruin, choosing wrong. Let me just go over some stuff that will happen when you choose wrong. Okay. Uh, choosing wrong can affect your children. They can definitely affect your children. Children are more likely to be withdrawn and socially isolated. They risk developing depression, low self-esteem, anxiety, and more, um, which stays with them throughout their adult life, okay? And that it's something that they would have to work through. It doesn't mean that they're doomed and it's gonna be forever doomed, but they just have to work with it. And many of you can attest to that. If you came up in a household where the, you know, the relationship was bad between your mother and father or whoever she was dealing with, um, then it affects you, okay? And so we have to kind of take the reins so we can have our children grow up healthy and strong. So it does matter who you choose in your life. It matters. It will affect your health, okay? Um, beyond mental implications, and that's big. You can have mental problems, all right? All types of mental situations. But also you have a higher risk of health problems such as a fatal heart attack high blood pressure, high sugar levels, and obesity. Your wounds, you know, when you cut yourself may um, heal slow. You have fatigue, weak, a weakened immune system, or even organ damage um, can develop. That's some serious stuff. Overdue, okay? <laughs> Over somebody we thought was sexy, honey, <laughs> and you're giving us a hard time, you could literally kill yourself, right? Um, it can affect your wealth. We don't talk a lot about that because some, so many of us just trying to survive, but you can, um, you can ruin uh, your ability to make money, honey. The right spouse can increase your income by more than 4,000 a year. That, that's a statistic, by more than 4,000. If you got the right spouse, somebody put that in the chat box, the right spouse. 50% of um, are more likely to get a promotion if you got the right one. Good to see you, Judy. Millionaires who built their wealth were married to the same person for over 50 years. I love reading biographies. And when you talk about old money, I mean, talking about people who actually built their millions. I'm not talking about people who built millions and then their children became millionaires from that. That's different because normally they will just spend all the money. They didn't work for it. But the ones who work for their millions from the ground up, the majority of them have been married for over 50 years. They stayed with the same spouse. What happens when you um, have a, a mad, bad relationship? What happens to your money? A lot of times your money has to be divided and you back at square one. Good to see you, Judy. We almost finished with the presentation. I mean, you still in on good time, but you know, we almost done. I don't, I don't want to talk too long before y'all. I want y'all to, to get in this and I want to hear what you got to say. But if you have questions, make sure you jot them down because I'm, I'm ready to hear from you guys. So your money can get all messed up. Your children, your health, your, your wealth. All right. It's hard to build um, generational wealth when you're dealing with different people and some is taking your bag and some is, you know, some not helping you. You pick the wrong one. Here you are building something, a business, and he right there trying to tear it down the whole time. If you read some of the biographies of our own people, um, when they did attain some wealth, they married this guy, and I mean, he was spending all the money. So you have to really, really be careful. You have to really be wise in the entire decision. 
Uh, you can build wealth and security with the right spouse because you guys can work together, all right? You're not, you're not at odds. You, you can say, hey, and if you got the, especially if you're with women and you have a male in your life, it's nothing like a male who can take leadership. It's just nothing like it. Because when he comes in and say, you know, I think we ought to work on this. And what do you think about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, well, I'll do this. And can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. And, and you can really build and you can build a life and you can build your wealth. Um, uh, if you pick wrong, it can ruin your marriage. It can uh, ruin your outlook. That's why you got a lot of women saying all men are dogs. Their outlook has been ruined. They, they don't see that there are some good men out there because they've been burned so many times. That's the worst thing to me I think can help happen to you other than something happening to your children is that you, you lose hope. And it also, if you choose wrong, it can ruin your testimony because it starts tainting your example, all right? So you wanna really be careful of that. Okay, so let's, how do we um, claim a reward in romance? Well, one is you got to seek God first. I teach that all the time, guys. You got to really be in tune with God. Listen to him. He knows what you want. I used to think that if God did it, then that means, you know, if the man was holy, he looked like the deacon board at my church. It was old. They was fat. They was bald head. They was gray. And I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. But God knows what you want. He knows you want a milk chocolate. He knows you want him with blonde hair. He know he already knows. You know what I'm saying? He already knows what you know. You know the way he talks and what he's about and all of that. He already knows because he knows you better than you. How many people eat, have eaten something here that you said you would never eat in the past and you ate it and you liked it? How many people are different from the way they were at 18 than they were at 28? I would go higher, but none of y'all are over 28 years old, so I won't go any higher. <laughs> How many of you have said one thing, and as you got older, you say, you know what, that's not too bad. So we don't really know ourselves that well, but God knows us. So we got to trust him first. This is how you claim a reward, any reward in romance and business, seek God first. The second thing is believe what he says. If he says it's going to happen, then it's going to happen. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter if the guy walks out and says, ain't nobody gonna want you. He, he's not God, okay? He doesn't know. It doesn't matter if it didn't happen for five years. If God said it, it's going to happen. And you got to start believing. You got to prepare for what he says. You can't just sit home and be like, oh, the Lord said he's going to do it. Yeah, and I know he's going to do it. And you don't never go out. You don't, you don't go meet people. You know, you don't, you don't get involved in activities. You don't go to, you know, some of the things that they have having for the singles at the church or whatever. You got to get out. You got to prepare. Preparing is, you see the book behind me, The Wise Courtship Philosophy. If you don't, haven't gotten you a, a copy, get you a copy. It's a three-step system. It's something that God literally gave me and I wrote about it because I'm not a writer, I'm a speaker. And he literally gave it to me. You need to get a copy of that because it's going to tell you what to do and how to go about it. And it's not going to be a philosophical, uh, you know, like a textbook. It's not going to be like that, okay? <laughs> it's going to be something that's going to help you. So you got to prepare. What is a wife going to be like? What, what, you know, what do you need to know? What do you need to do? So you'll be ready when it comes, when he comes. You got to step out on faith by doing the work, whatever that is. If that means you have low self-esteem and you need to work on it, then you need to work on your self-esteem. If you keep saying all men are dogs, there's something there. There's something sour there. You got to work on that and get that out. If, it, if you don't know how to cook something, you need to learn how to cook something. If you, if you, if you a sloppy person, you need to clean up. If you, if you don't, uh, when you go out, you look like who did it and why you need to get yourself together, honey, <laughs> comb that hair back, get some grease and slick it back. And getting them heels, because cute hurts sometimes. Y'all know I'm joking with that, right? <laughs> but 
but you got to do what's necessary. Claim it and cherish it. Once you actually see what God says and it's there and you prepare and all that, don't be afraid to claim it. Now, don't get crazy like some of these women. I think I don't watch The Bachelor because years ago when it came on, I watched it. And then I was like, this is crazy. Like, it's a meat shop. I, I just don't like stuff like that. But I did see, um, you know, talk show people talk about it and stuff. And they were saying with this last bachelorette, I think she she didn't even go through the whole program. She just fixated on this guy and said this was going to be the one. And she dragged him, you know, until he asked her to marry her. And then, of course, when the show was over and the limelight was gone, you know, a few months later, now they're not even together. She then gave her opportunity up to meet all these different guys and, you know, that kind of thing. You, I'm not talking about claiming nobody like that. I'm talking about when God finally says to you, and you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the one, you can now claim it and you can cherish it. You can walk in, in it. You can enjoy it because you've done everything you needed to do. Okay, so you can ignore all of this unless you have not been onto my website, which is wisecourtship.com. Also, I have a free course. I do have that on um, bit.ly uh, forward slash finding real love. If you have not taken that course, go ahead and take it, chair. It's free. All right, so I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to put us in a Q&A mode. Hey, thanks a lot for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to try to upload videos as much as possible. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Take care. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash wise courtship store.